But then one day, just switch. Just put a blue one on. Act the role of the other child. Maybe what I would really do is have quadruplets. Oh, gosh. And I'd keep, I'd homeschool two of them. <laughs> but I'd let the other two twins go out, do their, their regular school and out yeah. in the public. And then just just keep swapping them around. Maybe one day three of them go into school. So, so Matthew, first things first, yeah. you should never have children. Second, second. I was thinking. I was thinking when I lost Casper. Yeah. Um, how hard it's going to be when I lose a kid, right? And then I'm thinking I shouldn't ever lose a kid. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have a kid because you're planning on like uh, homeschooling half your children just so you could swap them later to prank it to an elementary school teacher. Were you planning on naming them <laughs> Red Kid and Blue Kid? At no, least no. my way saves just, some just money. Just something that starts with an R and a B. Yeah, my way saves some money because I can I can send two of them to school and then every other day I rotate them, send the other two to school. Yeah, but don't you think it'll be like, well, remember what we did yesterday? And those two kids will be like, oh God, I have no clue well, what we they, did yesterday. They're going to talk to each other. The twins are going to teach each other. Yeah, but you might not remember all the details of school until it's like, oh, remember what we talked about yesterday? And that's that specific thing. That didn't didn't matter yesterday, but now that you bring it up again, oh boy! Well, I haven't. All, I don't have all the kinks worked out. But mm-hmm. what's your second uh, your second issue? Um. Uh. So you've got quadruplets. Yes. What are you naming them all, and what are the colors? <laughs> Why are colors such a big thing? I don't want any colors. I don't want my children to uh, to have colors. You want them to dress identically. Yes. Yeah. Identically, probably with stripes, because I feel like twins with stripes are the, the best kind of twins. Uh, the, uh, based on what? I have, there's some chubby kids in, in uh, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. They had stripes. It feels like the most misch- mischievous children Tweedledee are... Tweedledee and Tweedledum? Yes. Mm. Uh, the more children you have that look the same, the more mischievous they are, and the more stripes they wear. You know that that's got to add, Do you add know something. The Bobsy twins. The Bobsy twins. No. I wish you did. Are they twins that you know of? No. Well, yes, but no. Really, no. My mom used to call my older brother and I the Bobsy twins when we were little kids. It's got to be like a forties thing. It's got to be some old reference that I just did not get. She also used to call us Cheech and Chong. Well, that that that's a reference. Yeah, that I understand that reference. With. But like, why was she calling her children Cheech and Chong? Were, were, were we acting like a couple of little stoner babies? Like we were. <laughs> I'm talking like when we were like four and six type of thing. Did you guys look Mexican with mustaches? Not no no <laughs> no. Only Cheech was Mexican. Chong was Canadian. Chong? Yeah, but he he he's just spent got a so much time with with. The cheech. cheech that's rubbed off. Yeah, I think so because I, I I've seen Chong in person and I thought and you he thought he was Mexican. I thought he still looked kind of Mexican. He I want to say very, he's from like Winnipeg or Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. He has a very uh, he, his skin is kind of dark, leathery skin. He lives. He's been living in California for decades. Probably has a good tan. Yeah, he, to me, he looks like a skinny uh, Danny Trejo. Okay, <laughs> like a like a non-threatening Danny Trejo. Very non non-threatening. Uh, however. Chong has been in prison. Yeah, I can picture that. For what? Uh, selling uh, oh, drugs, marijuana probably. paraphernalia. He uh-huh. had a website where he was selling like pipes or something. Well, that just seems like. What year was this? Like relatively recently. Because I like there's... after his stint on that '70s show. Who was this? Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong. I think he said Cheech. I'm all over the place here. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that doesn't seem illegal at all. I mean, there, there's right? stores that are out with storefront windows that are advertising this. I know. Uh, I guess it depends on the state because the internet is the whole, it's all the states. Yeah. So like maybe in one state it wasn't cool. And so he was selling it online. So he got caught and imprisoned. And they're going to make a, an example of this celebrity. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, conversely, uh, Danny Trejo has also been to prison. I believe it was also drug related. I feel like it's murder related. I don't know. What, uh, I feel like there's a lot. The, the, he's like the kind of person who you know there's some horrible stuff in his past, and whether or not he's been caught for it or not. I feel like Danny Trejo may be the actual most interesting man in the world. Maybe, but if interesting constitutes just a bunch of murder, I you know what I, I bet he hasn't murdered anyone. Maybe someone has died. Well, that's manslaughter. 
I mean, you can call murder manslaughter till the cows come home, but what is manslaughter? It, like involuntary <laughs> murder. Yeah, but there's an easy. You do something, it results in death, as opposed to specifically trying to murder someone. But I feel like that's what a good lawyer will do. Well, he'll he'll turn a murder into manslaughter. Well, yeah, I'll okay. get you off the hook. I, but I've got a feeling Danny Trejo in his pre Hollywood days did not have a good lawyer. No, probably not. I don't know anything about him. I'm just speculating. He's got a lot of face scars. Probably just had a lot of acne as a kid. Uh, let's go with that. Yeah, Dan Trejo. Just, either just either a real... criminal or had acne. <laughs> Career criminal with who now has a mustache or <laughs> had acne and now has a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> so, Matthew, we went to uh, Villa Mar today. Uh, mm. Close to Monk Metro, this original De Lalo Burger, just maybe a five minute walk from Monk Metro. Uh, I don't know if I've ever gotten on or off at Monk Metro before. It's a lovely little neighborhood. I feel like you say that about most neighborhoods, and I find most neighborhoods disgusting. Wait, what? You didn't like this neighborhood? No. What didn't you like about it? <laughs> I thought it seemed so so homey, like you could raise a family there. Buildings are too close together. When you see people, uh, when you see people's laundry out on the line, what's wrong with don't that? Don't like that. That means it's a beautiful day, and it's a, like a community where you don't have to worry about people stealing your laundry. It means they're too cheap to get dryers. No, in the in the in the summer you don't need to run your dryer. In the summer you could just put it out on the line and save a little electricity money. Keep those hydro bills down. Yeah, I guess it just uh, it depends. It depends what kind of stuff you're drying out there on the line. Springtime fresh. Yeah. Yeah. You ever dry something on a line? Yeah. They don't come back to you really crispy. Depends on how breezy and sunny it Full is. Earwigs? Earwigs, no. I've got issues with drying things online. So Apparently. Bugs get in. How are the, what are the, okay, hold on, hold on. If it's windy or and or sunny, they won't come back all crusty. No. If you hang them in your apartment, they'll come back all crusty. Hmm. I guess they're not coming back. When, they, when they're on a line, squeaky, 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 they come back. But yeah. when they're just sitting on a chair or something, they don't really come back. I don't have much experience with it. I think my dryer broke once for a, a week. I have to dry my uh My dryer's stuff. broken right now. Some of my stuff I dry outside. Some of my stuff I dry inside. The outside stuff, not bad. The inside stuff, crispy. Hmm. You were Crunchy. Running, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I, I, I take back my comment. I don't want people without dryers to think I'm insensitive to their... Their ways. Matthew, you're an elitist. You're a dryer elitist. You're just burning <laughs> money on your hydro bills. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's different now that I have to get tokens for the, uh, the apartment building. Drivers. Oh, okay, okay. So, do you dry fewer things? I wait till I have a lot of stuff to dry. So, Back in the old days, I would just dry a pair of socks because they felt uh, like felt they could nice. be drier. Yeah. Hmm. Don't you have radiators in your apartment? Can't you just put socks sitting on a radiator, like a heater? Yeah, electric heater. Oh, electric heater. You don't have any of those like water no radiators. No, no, no. None of that, sir. So my solutions for you are are gone. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? Why I didn't like this town? Yeah. Villamar. Well, it's not a town. Technically, it's a Vil? borough or it's a uh, neighborhood of a borough, the Sudwest borough. Okay. Maybe I just didn't like it because it was so far away from where I live. Not that far. It's like five metro stops away. That's... Five metro stops. It doesn't matter how many metro stops. If I have to get on a metro to get to you, I've already spent three dollars and I'm unhappy. I mean, okay, you don't have a metro pass, Matthew? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I mean, for starters, you could buy two at once. If you're going to Villamar and back, you know mm. you go take a metro twice. Yeah. It's cheaper to buy two at once. Yeah, it's not making it better though. I'm still. I already said I'm spending three dollars. That's that's. I guess assuming. that is what you're spending if yeah. you get two at once. Yeah. Yeah. But my reasons are superficial. So, what what are your reasons for for loving it so much? Why don't I mean, you move I've, there? I've never I've never been there before, and I can see myself maybe moving there as long as I'm close to the metro. Okay. Uh, it seems like a really nice little neighborhood. It reminds me of TMR a little bit. Town okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these little uh, all these little insider uh, abbreviations that you have, Matthew. You live in this city. I feel like more people know TMR as TMR than the town of Mount Royal. Yeah. It's true. Even in DG. Notre Dame de Grasse. Yeah, right? there you go. Yeah, yeah, I think it's only because of you. You told me what it was <laughs> once when we went to go get a burger over Probably there. at NBG. 
Maybe. <laughs> I just go where you tell me. I, you tell me to get <laughs> off here. Sometimes I don't even make it to the right metro. That's true. Sometimes That's... I sometimes you say one thing and I go to something that sounds similar. Yeah. No, it's no, no. like, starts with a V, I'll be there. <laughs> and then it's like you read a text message and just stop at the first letter of the metro stop and go, yeah, yeah, yeah I know the one. <laughs> it's better than how I used to be. I would just, if I had to get on the metro, I would just get on left or right, all right, 50-50 chance, and then I would just <laughs> hope that I'm heading the right way. So, Matthew, let's say next week you have to choose where we go. Uh, what what neighborhood would you choose to go? Uh, downtown Montreal. We've done so many downtown Montreal. We need to spread it out a little bit. Give the different neighborhoods of Montreal their due. See, see regional favorites. Westmount. Oh, okay. All right. It's even You're closer really... to me. Yeah, it's even closer to you. Okay, Matthew. I guess that's why I generally choose what burger we go and eat. Yeah, you. I, I like to stay in one confined area. You like to spread all over the map. You that's like right. to, to just venture out and... There's, if you were a serial killer, they'd never find you. That's probably true. Because you're you're wild, you're unpredictable. Who knows what I'm going to do next? Yeah, me, I'm gonna I'm gonna exhaust all the resources in the immediate area and mm-hmm. then slowly circle out, <laughs> expand my radius just a little bit, just enough. You know what they say, Matthew? They always return to the scene of the crime. Who does? I guess a murderer, a criminal. The I don't police know. usually have to return. The police definitely return, but it's they weren't work. there. They turn. Yeah, they but don't I, sometimes for bigger, bigger issues, they have to go. back. I guess they gotta go back a couple yeah. times. So the criminal. And we almost never return to the scene of the crime. No. Until today, we went back to Delala Burger, Matthew. Let's start getting into your issues with Delala Burger, this time, and maybe. Maybe a little bit of the the intervening Delala burgers you had and what was right and what was wrong. I want to be clear that there was no crime committed. So our return to Delala was... Well, I mean, you could argue that the <laughs> Delala burger we had on our first visit was the real crime. I'd say it was an injustice. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but, um, all right, Sebastian. So not a lot has changed at Delala. Since 1929, Matthew. I feel like a lot has changed in, in in those years, but not a lot has changed since we went. Okay. A year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. They still did not serve me on a plate. Correct. Uh, I don't know if they listened to this podcast, but if they had, maybe they'd be better uh, prepared for this. But we also said we were not going to give them any heads up. That's right. So this was uh, a surprise visit, a surprise <laughs> inspection. Uh, also, they were they were empty again. They were Empty. And Mind you, Villamar, like it's lunchtime. It's a much bigger location. They serve beer. I imagine they're probably busier during like uh, evenings or hockey nights or whatever. They've got all kinds of sports memorabilia up on the walls. They're yeah. uh, big, big supporters of the Villamar Hurricanes youth football team. Not somebody I know. <laughs> okay. I was looking at all those pictures, trying to find one person that I could recognize. I'm looking for a Kermit the Frog. I'm looking for a... No, like these, a these are very local uh, celebrities. There was like a, a wrestler from the from back in the day. There were plenty of hockey players. Uh, apparently, they've been big supporters of Mario Lemire his entire life. Like, uh, they've got pictures of him when he was playing in juniors and stuff, where it's like, you know, Mr. DeLalo got his arm around him, and then he's got, like, a Stanley <laughs> Cup, and Mr. DeLalo still has his arm around him. Mr. DeLalo gets his arm around him, and they take yeah, a picture? Yeah, maybe, maybe he's uh, financially supported him as a youth. Hmm. So he's uh, a good kid from the neighborhood. Okay. Did he, did he have anything to say about DeLalo? Um, there were some signatures, but it was pretty hard to read. Uh, there was also a, a photo that I shared on Instagram mm-hmm. of uh, Montreal Canadiens current general manager, Mark Bergevin, back when he was uh, okay. still a player with the St. Louis Blues, saying number one burger. No date, though. No date. So you don't know if his mind... We should find out Go if, track if down, his opinions have track changed. Track down Mark Bergevin. So, Bergevin, I have a very important question for you. Uh, the, the composure of the team has changed quite a bit over the course of the summer. Uh, new season starting soon, but <laughs> most importantly, is the Lalo Burger still your number one burger? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Got me out of left field here. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Trevor Timmons uh, what uh, what he thinks. He can't, he can't just answer for himself. No, he's got to he's got to defer to his uh, his scouting staff. How many millions? <laughs> Did, were, were given to him 
to say that it was his favorite 